afternoon we are discussing some case uh, this is case number 1 32 year old male patient came with complaints of fever and abdominal pain since 14 days he also he was also having intermittent loose motion on ultrasound examination we, uh, we can see that there is a uh, segmental bowel wall thickening predominantly hypoechoic in lesion uh, hy uh, predominantly hypoechoic in appearance and uh, it was uh, what we can see here is on uh, color doppler we should see uh, uh, we can see here is the significant raised vascularity was seen within uh, as well as there was a few uh, sub, uh, sub, sub, sub centimetric lymph nodes uh, this is another case of uh, with similar complaints we can clearly see here that this patient was having significant segmental uh, thickening in the bowel wall with uh, lymph nodes within and uh, it was also having raised vascularity on color doppler ecogenic calcifications were also seen within this so my findings are segmental thickening of bowel loops raised vascularity on color doppler and mesenteric lymph nodes based on these findings my diagnosis was uh, inflammatory bowel disease its uh, uh, closest differential is tuberculosis the difference between tuberculosis and inflammatory bowel disease is in inflammatory bowel disease we get segmental bow uh, bowel thickening whereas rest of the bowel loops will show preserved uh, gut signature whereas in tuberculosis we will get intramural uh, 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 bowel thickening there will be with loss of gut signature then this is the case number 2 12 year old male patient came with complaints of pain in epigastric region bilious non projectile vomiting since one days on ultrasound examination we can see here there was a twisting or swirling of bowel with mesentery along with that there was there was significant alteration in the relation between sma and smv we can see again uh, in this image in this cine loop here we can see that this is the the relation between the sma and smv is re reversed uh, here because uh, usually sma and smv smv lies left to the sma but here we have seen the uh, swirling sign or the whirlpool sign with the alter uh, with the reverse with the reversal of S uh, relationship between the sma and smv we can clearly see here so there is uh, with a whirlpool sign twisting of the bowel with uh, uh, a reversal of sma and smv relation so my diagnosis in this case was malrotation of midgut with valvulus the closest differential of this finding was intersusception there was one question that uh, what is the distinguishing point between the uh, valvulus and intersusception on ultrasound this whirlpool sign what we get in uh, 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 valvulus whereas in intersusception we get uh, classical target appearance involving the intersuscipient and intersusceptor so target sign we get in uh, uh, target sign we get in intersusception whereas whirlpool sign we get in valvulus this is the case number 3 52 year old male patient came with complaints of abdominal lump and abdominal pain since 25 days he was also having intermittent loose motion we can see here in the uh, uh the appendix was coming so this is the c uh, cecum and uh, in in the cecum we we can clearly see there is intramural thickening with hypoechoic uh, mass lesion within it was uh, uh, the patient was also having few lymph nodes so seg segmental thickening with intramural mass lesion with mesenteric lymph nodes so my diagnosis was cecal neoplastic etiology mass lesion then this is the last case 70 year old male patient came with complaints of abdominal pain since 3 months he was also having bleeding per rectum as we can see on transrectal ultrasound we can see that there was intramural endophytic mass lesion within the rectum with significant thickening in the rectum wall on transabdominal scan also we can see the findings
So endo endophytic lesion involving the rectum circumferentially with increased thickening of entire rectal wall with minimal peripheral vascularity. On color Doppler it was showing minimal peripheral vascularity. So my diagnosis is rectal neoplastic etiology mass lesion. Thank you. Next set of cases will be presented by Dr. Yes, uh, who is a senior resident in Department of Radiology. Good afternoon, everyone. For today, we will be discussing few logis. So this one was this one is the first case. Fifty years old man came with the complaints of burning micturition with the suprapubic pain. A patient was advised USG abdo pelvis. On USG abdo pelvis, we could see a. Um, here that there is a linear hyperechoic track could be seen here which is the air filled track communicating from the bowel with the bladder so as we could see here clearly it could be seen in the second uh, scene again it, this one is a transfer section where we could again see the communication of the bowel wall with the bladder hyperechoic track could be clearly seen also we could visualize number of echoes within the bowel which suggests of cystitis This one are the images. The linear track could be clearly seen here with the echoes. The patient was asked to perform the barium enema, and on enema we could see that there is a communication of the bowel wall with the uh, bladder. So, and multiple diverticuli could be seen here. So, in this case, as the, the findings are the linear air filled track which is communicating from the bowel with the bladder with multiple diverticuli along the uh, large bowel. So this one was the case of uh, a diagnosis of enterovesical fistula was made. The probable etiology was multiple diverticulosis. The most common etiology for enterovesical fistula is uh, ure ureteric stone, uh, but again the enterovesic uh, the here it was diverticulosis. So this one is the case number two. Ten years old boy uh, came. Uh, patient was admitted in ICU for pneumonia, came with the chief complaints of abdominal pain and loose stools. Uh, patient was advised USG abdo pelvis. On USG abdo pelvis, we could see there is a gross thickening of the rectum and as we go ahead further, the large bowel, wall, large bowel loops could be seen thickened and edematous. So this one is the uh, B mode image, the CNSF. Uh, another CNSF as we could see here, there is a gross thickening of the bowel wall. With the multiple uh, subcentimetric lymph nodes could be seen around. Also, we could see there is the surrounding inflammatory changes around the bowel wall, which is important. Next one here, as we could see, the thickening of the rectum is approximately about 1.66 centimeter, and on uh, color Doppler we could see it is showing the res vascularity. Again, along the large bowel loop, that is, this was the uh, descending colon. Here, the thickness was approximately about 5.5 mm. And again, it also showed raised vascularity, surrounding inflammatory changes, and the lymph nodes were seen. The history here is important since the patient was admitted in ICU for pneumonia. Patient was on antibiotics, so one of the uh, reason for the you know, bowel wall thickening is pseudomembranous colitis. The pseudomembranous colitis patients are disposed because of the when the patients have been given lo uh, antibiotics for long term. Clostridium difficile is the uh, organism. It organism which causes pseudomembranous colitis. Now this one is the case number three. 
35 years old female came with a history of abdominal pain here we could see uh, there is a, a small bowel loop and along the small bowel loop we, where we could see a defect in the mucosal region again as we could see here there is a defect in the mucosal region as we could clearly demonstrate here on color doppler we could see the bowel wall is showing the raised vascularity and also the defect could be seen here so if we could see there is a, a mucosa is seen in the upper anterior layer the mucosa is seen here but the mucosal defect is seen here however the continuity of the bowel wall is maintained so this one was of case of the mucosal uh, discontinuity in the bowel wall here we could see the mucosal uh, defect of approximately 0.3 mm uh, 3 mm or 0.3 cm a uh, raised vascularity could be seen here so here the diagnosis of the uh, bowel wall ulcer was made uh, the causes of the bowel wall ulcers could be multiple but here the patient was of the uh, crohn's disease and further the diagnosis of crohn's disease was made now last case uh, here the 55 year old man came with the complaints of altered bowel habit Uh, with the generalized pain in abdomen here on the cine save image we could see the we are tracing here the large bowel starting from the rectum and here the, there is a continuous wall thickening involving the rectum uh, sigmoid colon and again the descending colon here surrounding inflammatory changes are seen that is hyperechoic mesentery could be seen here so we could see here there is the continuous thickening Uh, the difference between the two types of inflammatory bowel disease that is ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease is the, there would be skip lesions in cases of the uh, crohn's disease whereas in ulcerative colitis there would be the continuous involvement again here we could see there is a thickening of the bowel wall that is it was approximately around 4.5 mm and the surrounding inflammatory changes are seen here so the diagnosis of the ulcerative colitis was made here Thank you.